How are you? I'm Ash. <laughs> Hi, my name is Professor Silver, and in today's class, we'll be breaking down the complete history of Ash's Gibble, detailing all his battles, storylines, and character development. Prior to Gibble's debut and a meteoric rise to excellence, he regularly left his forest home to watch in awe as Grandma Wilma trained dragon types to use Draco Meteor. Gibble became so enamored with Wilma's teachings that he resolved himself to master the attack no matter the cost. Even though Gibble gave Ash a major headache when they first met, his desire to learn Draco Meteor so impressed Ash that he took a special interest in his development and did all he could to help him. While Gibble had no issue boosting his dragon power or concentrating energy into his core, all his attempts at Draco Meteor were hindered by an inability to hit anything but Piplup. You okay? He wanted to learn Draco Meteor more than anything else in the world, but his clueless nature and love for biting led him to lose focus during practice and bite Ash rather than keep training. Before Ash and Gibble could resume their training, Team Rocket kidnapped an Altaria in Wilma's care, so they teamed up to track the evil trio and retrieve their fluffy friend. During the rescue mission, Gibble revealed himself an oblivious fool with a heart of gold. He got sidetracked by apples, saved Ash from an early demise, devoured Jessie's hair, turned her mech into a midday snack, pummeled Survivor, and amazed the gang by blasting off Team Rocket with Draco Meteor. Despite the flawless execution, Gibble's very next attempt showed he still had much to learn. He disappeared soon after rescuing Altaria, but took such a liking to Ash that he followed him to Daybreak Town and got to get a Gibble. At the episode's start, Gibble ate half a town, snacked on the Blastobot, asked to join Ash's team, and frazzled Ash by changing his mind as soon as Ash accepted his request. When Ash and Officer Jenny tried to chide Gibble for his awful behavior, Gibble responded with a vacant stare, Don't ever do that again! Painful bite, <laughs> and frustrating getaway. While chasing Gibble, Ash ran across his rival Barry and let slip that Gibble was wild. Since Barry didn't respect the bro code and wanted to punish Gibble for eating his bike, he ignored Ash's plea to stand down and set out to capture him with Empoleon. Gibble dodged Drill Peck, but Empoleon evaded Rock Smash, landed Steelwing, and did major damage with Hydro Cannon. Because Barry failed to throw a Pokeball before Gibble flew into the stratosphere, his foolishness allowed Ash a second chance at capture. When Ash fell while rescuing Gibble from the branch he landed upon, Gibble was so worried for Ash's well-being that he caught his collar and ferried him to safety by digging straight up the mountain. Right as they were about to celebrate their success and solidify their newfound friendship, Team Rocket disrupted their bliss, kidnapped Gibble, and trapped him within their new and improved Blastobot. Though the situation was dire, Ash refused to lose out on his new friend, leapt across a canyon, and told Pikachu to zap the bot with Thunderbolt, not caring that he would get fried in the process. Once Gibble was freed by Pikachu, he happily agreed to join Ash's team, as Ash's heroism and selfless sacrifice had proven his worthiness as a trainer and earned him a friend for life. Immediately after capture, Ash tested Gibble's strength against Barry's Empoleon. Empoleon overpowered Gibble's first rock smash with Drill Peck, but Gibble was so invigorated by Ash's support that he summoned his strength and held Empoleon at bay the second time around. Despite Gibble's comeback, however, Empoleon did major damage with Steel Wing, repelled rock smash, countered Dig with Hydro Cannon, and drove him into a fury. Gibble became so angry at the situation that he unleashed Draco Meteor without being ordered. He executed the move perfectly, but Empoleon swatted the blast towards Piplup anyway, dodged Dragon Pulse, and won with Hyper Beam. Losing the battle proved a huge boon in the long run, as it helped Gibble realize he would grow stronger, faster, if he started listening to Ash and accepted his commands. In return for Gibble's loyalty, Ash showered him with affection and never gave up on his goal to master Draco Meteor. Because Gibble was Psyduck's intellectual equal, their training often resulted in hilarious mayhem. In short and to the punch, for example, Gibble got bored during training, ate the rock it stood upon, sank to the bottom of a river, and nearly drowned before getting rescued by Buizel. As additional comic relief, almost all of Gibble's attempts at Draco Meteor resulted in massive headaches for Piplup. No matter where Piplup hid, Draco Meteor always found its mark. In dealing with the fierce devil ditto drama, for instance, the move proved accurate enough to differentiate Piplup from a transformed ditto. Gibble's constant harassment and volley of attacks so weighed on Piplup's psyche that the little penguin exploded in rage after being blasted in Piplup up and away. Because Piplup retaliated with a flurry of attacks and ran off in despair, Gibble tried to make amends by finding him. Unfortunately for Piplup, Gibble's absent-minded nature led him to find little but trees and riparian tails. Since Ash and Dawn rarely punished Gibble for his actions, it wasn't until he had a practice battle with Togekiss and with the easiest of grace that he finally faced some real repercussions. During the two's training match, Gibble missed Rock's match 
Slash withstood Sky Attack, fired off Dragon Pulse, easily evaded Aurasphere, and retaliated to Air Slash with Draco Meteor. Before the attack hit Piplup, however, Togekiss gave Gibble a taste of his own medicine, admonished him for his meanness, questioned his friendship with Piplup, and told him to never hurt her brother again. Shortly after Gibble was scolded, he revealed he never acted in malice, had no control of the attack's trajectory, and felt major regret for all the pain he caused. In spite of Gibble's sincere apology and feelings of remorse, Togekiss had zero reservations about repelling Draco Meteor when Gibble unintentionally targeted Piplup a few episodes later in Opposites Interact. While Piplup and Gibble never became the best of friends, Piplup acknowledged Gibble as his buddy in bucking the treasure trend after Gibble scared off a wild golem and tracked Piplup with Draco Meteor. Beyond training Draco Meteor and earning Piplup's trust, Gibble also offered immense utility support. The best example of Gibble's helpfulness can be found in the fleeing Tower of Sunny Shore, where he freed Ash from Team Rocket, broke through a metal door, and munched on the trio's mech. Because of Gibble's utility support and training with Ash, he mastered Draco Meteor sometime before Ash fought Conway in working on a right move. Almost immediately upon entering the battlefield, Gibble established himself as the MVP of the Sinnoh League's third round. Noctowl and Donphan both struggled immensely against Shuckle's power trick, but Gibble turned the tide, caught Gyro Ball, sharpened his teeth, withstood Sludge Bomb, and prevailed with Draco Meteor. Since Conway's second Pokemon, Licky Licky, preempted Dragon Pulse with Lick and overcame Dig with Power Whip, Ash chose to save Gibble's power and beat the Licker with Noctowl instead. After Dust Noir beat Noctowl and Donphan, Gibble returned to the field as Ash's last hope for victory. Dust Noir landed the first hit thanks to Trick Room and dodged Dig, but Gibble intercepted Shadow Punch, encased the ghost within Draco Meteor, withstood another Shadow Punch, and won with Dragon Pulse. Though Gibble missed out on Ash's battle with Paul, he was the only member of the Sinnoh Squad to join Ash in the semifinals in the semifinal frontier. To start things off, Gibble rock smashed Tobias' Darkrai, hopped away from Ice Beam, and let loose Draco Meteor. Darkrai dodged the assault and won with Dark Pulse, but Tobias couldn't have been more impressed by Draco Meteor's power. As a testament to Gibble's training, Tobias claimed the blast so incredible that it would have obliterated any Pokémon it touched except for his Darkrai. Since the Sinnoh League's conclusion, Gibble has remained at Oak's lab, only appearing in brief cameos. Given his oblivious nature, I like to think he spends his days in blissful ignorance, never realizing Ash left him behind. <laughs> and now for the battle record. Gibble won against Conway's Shuckle and Conway's Dust Noir. He lost to Barry's Empoleon and Tobias's Darkrai. Over the course of the series, Gibble used Dig, Draco Meteor, Dragon Pulse, and Rock Smash. Even though Gibble joined the series towards the end of the Sinnoh Saga, his oafish personality, clueless demeanor, and well-executed training arc made him one of the saga's most memorable characters. Gibble missed out on Ash's return to Oak's lab and journeys, but I hold hope he'll one day return, evolve to his last form, and assume position as one of Ash's strongest Pokémon. Seeing a Garchomp with Gibble's personality would be downright hilarious, but only time will tell if the evolution will ever come to pass. And with that, class is adjourned. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you're never late, and for extra credit, like this video and let me know your thoughts on Ash's Gibble. Until next time, catch you later.